minds, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. They obey Satan. They oppose God. They are coming against us, and they are against us now. These demons are. They influence believers. 1 Timothy 4.1 now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Now, I want you to notice here, this is not teaching we can lose our salvation. This verse is not teaching that we are going to lose our faith. Okay, When you understand the word faith in the scriptures, sometimes it talks about the belief in Christ. Other times it talks about the faith, that's the gospel that we believe in. So what it's saying in this verse is that some will depart from the faith, some will depart from the gospel that we believe in by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. I want to focus on the word teachings. There are people who are changing the gospel, right? I'm reading a book for class right now. I'm taking a class on salvation. And I'm reading a book by John MacArthur, The Gospel According to Jesus. That book... It's called, it basically takes a lordship salvation viewpoint. All right? So that we have two viewpoints. We have lordship salvation on one side. We have free grace on the other side. John MacArthur says in the preface, he says this. He says, look, this issue is so important that whoever is wrong is sending people to hell. Either lordship salvation is sending people to hell, according to John MacArthur, or free grace people are sending people to hell, according to John MacArthur. That's what he teaches. Free grace is the idea. Free grace is the idea that I get to heaven by faith alone and Christ alone. Lordship salvation is the idea that I get to heaven by faith alone, but I also show fruits. If I don't have fruits, I'm not saved. I'm saved by Christ, saved by grace, but I'm going to show fruits. Without the fruit, then I'm not a believer. That's what lordship teaches. One of those is right, one of those is wrong. Both of which are, proposed, are pushed by believers. Is John MacArthur a believer? I think so. Zane Hodges on the other side, this great theologian out of Dallas Theological Seminary, is also a believer. You have two believers teaching two opposite things, and who's right? Well, I'll tell you this. Right now, one of them is being taught by deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. That's what I know. And in later times, that is going to happen, and we are facing it right now. We are absolutely facing that right now. Rob Bell. You guys ever hear the name Rob Bell? All right. Rob Bell was a young man, a pastor, um, who did some great work, some Sunday school materials that we, that we taught in, in Omaha. He had some great material. The last book that he wrote basically taught universalism that in the end, love wins. We're all going to get to experience our own kind of heaven. God is not a God who separates out, and, and he's not the God who you're going to heaven and you're going to hell. That is not God, according to Rob Bell. Deceitful teachings. That's what it is, deceitful teachings by people who, who really should know better, right? But in the end, they're deceived, they're influenced by demons. All right, so what? What do we do? We be alert. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by the brotherhood throughout the world. So be sober-minded, be watchful, because Satan is real. That's what I'm telling you today. Satan is real. Be alert. Be against. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Now, I want to stop right there for just a moment. This last part, give no opportunity to the devil. We give no opportunity to the devil by doing what? By be angry, do not sin, do not let the sun go down in your anger. And how do you not let the sun go down in your anger? What do you have to do first? Forgive. Remember that verse I just read earlier on how forgiveness keeps us from being outwitted by the devil? The forgiveness does not give, op forgiveness does not give opportunity to the devil to get a foothold in our life. They say when God repeats himself, you better sit up and pay attention. We've got two different passages where both are saying the exact same thing. Forgive, forgive, forgive so that Satan cannot have a foothold in your life. And I don't know what you've got, people. But if you're sitting here and you're angry over something and you're not willing to forgive whoever it is that's hurt you, then right now Satan has a foothold in your life. That's a biblical truth. That's not from me saying that. That's from the Bible saying that. What do you have in your life you've got to forgive? Because right now, if you have unforgiveness, you're giving opportunity to the devil. He wants to divide us and he will if we choose to be unforgiving. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We need to stand strong against Satan. He's real. He's out there. We need to stand strong. And be armed. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore. You get all these stands? Stand, stand. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace and all circumstances to take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. This is a whole sermon series, so I'm not going to dive into this very much. But we have what's called the armor of God. Write this thing down. Go home, look it up. Ephesians chapter 6, all right, 13 through 16. Go home, read this. Do a study on this. This is the armor of God. We have an armor provided to us by God. Are we willing to put it on? Are we willing to do that? We know that Satan is real. We know that angels are real. We know that demon, demons are real. They have power. Now, anybody ever read Frank Peretti? Yeah, Frank Pretty. See, when I was in junior high, Frank Pretty came out with these books. Pierce in the Darkness, His Present Darkness. He kind of had this old McDonald kind of theology. Here a demon, there a demon, everywhere a demon, demon. Right? You tracking with me? And so everything was caused by a demonic force. Now, I don't agree with his take on that, that everything is caused by either demonic or an angelic force, good or evil. All right? I'm not really there. But I do like the fact that he raised an awareness within many of the evangelicals as they read those books that they're really are forces against us just as there are forces for us and i hope today you guys your level of awareness has been raised that satan biblically satan is out there biblically satan is against us biblically angels are here ministering to us they're there and we have a response that we need to do starting with forgiveness when you think about the satan when you think about satan and his forces starting with forgiveness is the first thing we need to do and i don't know what you got going on in just a moment here the lady's going to come up they're going to lead us in the final song. But if you've got some... And Bud, thank you. You know what? Bud, you're awesome. We're going to have a little joke here because last week I did the same thing to him and he told me, he said, Pastor, I almost wore a dress today because you called me a lady last week. <laughs> you know, I'm glad the demons did not deceive you. <laughs> and so you showed some restraint. <laughs> You know, trying to get it back. You know, all right, the spirits left the building here. Okay, bringing it back together. As the worship team comes up and lead us, is there some forgiveness that you need to deal with? Maybe there's somebody you need to talk to sitting right next to you. Maybe there's something you need to just bow before God today in your chair and say, God, when I get home today, help me to do this. Help me to do this. And maybe there's somebody you need to say, maybe somebody you need to talk to say, you know what? I have something that I have to forgive somebody for. Will you hold me accountable to make sure I do that? If there's something in your life you need to get for, you need to deal with, today be the day to do it. Do not let Satan have a foothold. Ladies, come on up. Bud, come on up. You're awesome. As they come, process through it. Process through that. Ask God to show you if there's an area in your life that you need to seek forgiveness. What's an area in your life that you need to go and you need to forgive somebody for something that they've done to you? And I'm sure it hurt. But through the power of God, you can forgive. Let's stand and sing together.